live in interesting times. This week's stories. In New York, Mayor Bill de Blasio proclaims January 13 as Iglesia de Cristo Day. In Connecticut, the Church of Christ inaugurates another of its School for Ministers, this time in Johnsonville. In Canada, the Music Expo takes the music experience from the digital into the real world. Also in Canada, the International Boat Show brings sailing culture to Toronto. Plus, for EBC Sports in Los Angeles, Kobe memorials sprout up in the City of Angels. This is Eagle News Weekend Edition, broadcasting from Los Angeles, bringing you stories from around the globe. I am Alan Basoyahe. New York City proclaims January 13 as Iglesia de Cristo Day in recognition of the church's notable contribution to communities in need through the Felix Y. Manalo Foundation. Eagle News correspondent Abigail Mayo with the story. City Hall. For New York City, this building serves as a seat of the municipal government. It has also served as a backdrop for significant events that have happened throughout the city's history. Today, the Iglesia Ni Cristo received recognition from the Office of the Mayor for its long-standing commitment to service for the welfare of the people of New York. On behalf of the Mayor of the City of New York, we would like to present this proclamation. We are deeply appreciative of the ways that this church has honored New York's core values through its generosity and dedication to service. And as you come together to celebrate this milestone anniversary, I am proud to join in recognizing the incredible legacy of Iglesia Ni Cristo and its efforts to lead the way to a better tomorrow. So now, therefore, I, I Bill de Blasio, de Blasio mayor, mayor of the City of, of New York, York do hereby proclaim Monday, <laughs> January 13, 2020, in, in the city of New York, York as Iglesia Ni Cristo Day. Day. Today, another milestone happened in the Church of Christ because today, January 13, 2020, marks the fourth uh, proclamation that the uh, Felix Y. Manalo Foundation have received. Through the charitable arm of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, the Felix Y. Manal Foundation has conducted outreach events around the world to communities in need or struck by calamity. We endured like a really serious uh, mass shooting in Brownsville and Felix Y. Manala Foundation did an amazing job at just stepping in and really helping us in a deep way. They came in and gave tens of thousands of dollars to community groups and organizations that have already been doing a lot of work on the ground and that was something that almost no other entity really did at the time. We're always just really thankful to any groups that do a lot of good. For members of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, it was a chance to witness a historic occasion at City Hall. I decided to come here because this is a very inspiring event of the Iglesia Ni Cristo. I really can say this is God's work. I came to support the church and I'm so excited that we've been recognized for all the great work that we do around the world. So I think it's amazing that the city recognized that and wants to honor us. The recognition that we receive from the city is something that we value because it shows that we are able to help the community. This is what our executive minister is always saying, that the Iglesia Ni Cristo is always in partnership with the government when it comes to fighting against uh, poverty. And this is also what was mentioned by uh, Brother uh, Glicerio B. Santos Jr. He said that in this year, 2020, there will be bigger and better um, aid to humanity that the Iglesia Ni Cristo will be doing. Reporting from City Hall in New York City, Abigail Mayo, 1 with 25. Meanwhile in Connecticut, another school for ministers of the Church of Christ is inaugurated, this time in Johnsonville. Eagle News correspondent Abigail Mayo is back with the story. Studies have shown that schools have a great impact in revitalizing communities by bringing new opportunities and rebirth to areas in need of redevelopment. 
For nearly 20 years, Johnsonville Village in Moody's, Connecticut stood abandoned until 2017 when the Iglesia Ni Cristo Church of Christ purchased the town and brought new life to this once forgotten area. Today, the Iglesia Ni Cristo, in connection with its efforts to redevelop the town of Johnsonville, inaugurated a new extension of its school for ministers. Iglesia Ni Cristo Church of Christ School for Ministers, 40 Johnsonville Road, Moodus, Connecticut, USA, 06469. Inaugurated the 17th day of January, 2020. Signed by our Executive Minister, Brother Eduardo V. Manalo. Ang pagbubukas ng paaralan dito sa uh, Johnsonville ay naging, o naging isang malaking tulong sa community kasi biglang naging vibrant ang uh, community sapagkat uh, sumaya, nagkaroon ng mga uh, karagdagang mga tao at uh, ang activities and movement within the area ay uh, naging aktibo because of the School for Ministers. Now we will have the tour of the school and the facilities. Previously, under the Iglesia Ni Cristo's New Era University, called the College of Evangelical Ministry, established in September of 1974, the main campus of the School for Ministers is located in Quezon City, Philippines, and now has nine extensions outside the Philippines. When schools are established in developing areas, such as Johnsonville, their presence attracts people, helping boost businesses of the local economy. Schools also function like community centers, offering aid in times of uncertainty. I hope by having our school here, we can bring more community members into our church, into our local activities around the neighborhood. While the establishment of the village of Moodis is as early as 1662, with the newly established school for ministers here in Johnsonville, its new residents, the students of the school, hope to continue to uplift this community. I hope that we're able to bring sort of a youthful energy to this community. I know back in Washington, D.C., um, every time before an evangelical mission, we'd go out, we would propagate in full force. Uh, we'd be out for hours propagating, and I hope we can bring that same energy here in Johnsonville, Connecticut. Hopefully we can have the community excited about these events. Hopefully we can have many more activities with the help of the church administration. It's very isolated. There may be people out here that need that um, spiritual uplifting, that need that, uh, that love of community. But we can have that opportunity to have propagational activities, uh, aid to humanities, we can have edification activity spot, we can have saturation drives, uh, community outreaches. Uh, we won't be shy to reach out to any of our neighbors that are around this place. Uh, we'll be sure to do our part when it comes to propagation and also edification by brethren coming here. They'll be happy to see us. In the, in the near future, this place will just grow. Reporting from the School for Ministers in Johnsonville, Connecticut, this is Abigail Mayo from Eagle News, 1 with 25. Thanks, Abigail. Coming up, in Canada, the Music Expo takes the music experience from the digital into the real world. And the International Boat Show brings sailing culture to Toronto. Eagle News Weekend Edition will return shortly. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is Eagle News Weekend Edition coming to you from Los Angeles. I am Alan Basoyahe. The Music Expo gathers artists and fans for a music experience from the digital into the real world. Angela Milano reports. 
These days of digital music, at a time when anyone can stream music from their phones and musicians can release their new songs through popular streaming apps like Spotify and Apple Music, experiencing music live like getting an autograph, owning vinyls, meeting musicians, talking and connecting in person has become a cherished and much coveted experience. In Toronto, Canadians are keeping the physical aspect of music alive here at the 4th Annual Canadian Music Expo at the Mississauga Convention Centre where musicians, producers and fans step outside of the digital world and experience music, IRL, in real life. This event is filled with almost everything related to music, especially things and work that listeners and fans don't get to see. There are sessions where you can meet, take a photo with your favorite musician, and get an autograph. The Musician's Alley is a place to meet other musicians and talk about anything and everything related to music, like songwriting, equipment, tours, and much more. For music fans, there's also the Record Corner, where you can buy records, CDs, cassettes, and other merch by your favorite musician. A music expo is not complete if it doesn't have its own live music show. This year, acoustic artists perform for all music fans. Some of the performers are... Matt Zadie, Bree Taylor, Binge Ninja, Natasha Meister, and Alyssa Pridham. There is also a special tribute to the late Canadian musician, lyricist, and drummer Neil Elwood Peart. Fans can drop letters and make a donation in memory of the famous Canadian drummer for the Canadian Cancer Society. It is often said that music is a universal language. Music is always regarded as a way to connect. In this world of social media, music streaming, and digital downloads, wherein you don't have to step out of your home to get music, it is important to remember that music has a physical quality to it, something that you can hold in your hands, something that you can see in person, and something you can listen and connect to live. From Mississauga Convention Center, Angela Milano, Eagle News, one with 25. Thanks, Angela. Still in Canada, it's everything sailing at the International Boat Show in Toronto. Our Eagle News correspondent, April Masongsong, takes us to what is dubbed the largest boat show in North America. Take a look. It might be winter here in Toronto, Canada, but it feels like summer as the city hosts North America's largest indoor boat show, the 62nd Toronto International Boat Show. Let's check it out. For 150 years, boating has made an impact in Canadian history, travel, and lifestyle. First Nations people have built boats and canoes for travel and transport long before. Boats were eventually used by the French and British as a means of transportation and market to and from Europe. Down the road, boating and canoeing became a recreational activity for young people. Boating became very popular in Canada that boat clubs were formed, like the Royal Canadian Yacht Club. The fishing industry was also influenced by the popularity of boating and canoeing lifestyle in Canada. Um, kind of grew up doing some boating and then went away, but now it's kind of come back. And now me and my family enjoy being out on the water. It's a very social and fun outing, you know, whenever you're on the boat. So you're usually doing it with other people. So it's, a, it's kind of a nice feeling to kind of family oriented and uh, social gathering. Uh, I came here primarily to see the sailboats. Uh, just because I uh, enjoy sailing, so kind of made my way around uh, this area over here. Fast forward to 2020 here in Entercare Centre, Toronto. The 62nd Toronto International Boat Show is in full swing with about 1,200 new boats on sale and display and 550 exhibitors for boating enthusiasts. This one-week event has educational seminars on the boating lifestyles, engines, trailers, paddle boards, kayaks, and marine accessories. This event also features the second annual Toronto Indoor Wakeboarding Championships. 
We've got lots of great features here at the show, um, great entertainment. We have the um, world's largest indoor lake. So what we've done is we have transformed the NHL-sized hockey arena um, into an uh, indoor lake for boaters. So we've actually taken out some extra seats around the rink, which is um, the Rico Coliseum, which is now called Coca-Cola Coliseum. And in January, come down, sign up for a canoe, a kayak, a pedal boat ride. Um, you can see a water ski show, a wakeboard show. And if you're really um, interested in, about education, we have over 300 free seminars and workshops. So a lot of people like to come to the show and learn about how to buy a boat, how to maintain a boat. Um, uh, and they like to talk to technicians to help them fix a problem that they might have on their boat. And then we've got a lot of people that talk about their adventures and they might have sailed around the world. So lots of great uh, people to listen to as well. Boating is so important to, uh, to people in Canada, especially, especially Ontario. There are so many lakes and waterways um, close by to um, people that live downtown Toronto. They've got all the, the lakes and rivers close by. Then you go west, you go east, you go north, and there's just hundreds and hundreds of uh, lakes. So it's really become part of Canadian um, culture that people like to escape to, uh, to the lake. They leave all their stresses behind. Um, and boating does connect people, friends, family. So a lot of people, that's the big driver of why people want to get into boating is because of that connection with family and friends and being able to leave all your worries behind. Boating may be old, dating back more than 150 years here in Canada, yet its culture is alive and well and it thrives as Canadians continue to explore the world through and beyond our water borders. From Enercare Centre in Toronto, Ontario, April Masong Song, Eagle News, One with 25. Thank you, April. Up next, for EBC Sports in Los Angeles, Kobe memorials sprout up in the City of Angels. Eagle News Weekend Edition will be right back. Stay with us. This is Eagle News Weekend Edition, coming to you from Los Angeles. I'm Alan Basoyahe. Days after Kobe Bryant's tragic death, murals of him, several with his daughter Gianna, who died with him in the accident, sprouted up in the city of Angels. Los Angeles is where Kobe built his NBA career and made his home. Ivan Sanchez has the details. Days after his sudden passing, makeshift memorials of Lakers legend Kobe Bryant sprouted throughout the City of Angels in the form of several murals on city streets depicting Kobe and his daughter Gianna, who also perished in the same helicopter accident on January 26. Designed by street artists and muralists, these works of art popped up from the San Fernando Valley throughout Los Angeles, including in downtown LA, home of the Staples Center, which can be said was the biggest unofficial memorial site and gathering place of mourners of the Lakers superstar in the days after his death. Although the Staples Center removed the public displays of appreciation and grief on its premises eight days after Kobe's untimely death, it remains to be seen if the other tribute sites scattered throughout the city will remain a more permanent part of the city's landscape, as enduring as Kobe is in the hearts of his fans who await the announcement of his public memorial service, which is expected to draw tens of thousands. In Los Angeles, for EBC News, this is Ivan Sanchez, one with 25. Thanks, Ivan. That is this week's Eagle News Weekend Edition. Join us next week for stories from our bureaus across the nation and around the globe. Visit our websites at eaglenews.net and eaglenewslive.com. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash eagle news and on facebook.com slash eagle news. Thank you for watching. I'm Alan Basoyahe. I am one with 25.